Watch Transit TV right now. Keep watching Transit TV. Thank you, sir. Football league players don't stay beyond one season, and teams cannot guarantee players signing contract for more than one season. I think uh, Sporting Lagos and Remo Stars are trying to work on that. They're beginning to give players longer contract, and that's, they are keeping players. And it's not just it doesn't just start and end with paying these players good salaries. It's also how you manage the entire process, the structure. You know, what, what are they looking at? Can they say, okay, this is the player I want to belong? You know, these are the things that... Transit TV, welcome back to our studios. We just uh, watched Edinburgh first game of the CAF Confederation Cup this season. And uh, unfortunately, as feared, the Edinburgh couldn't get the win. They lost the game 2-0 to a mastery of Egypt. And uh, this was one of the weaker teams in Egypt that we expected Edinburgh to get at least a draw from. But unfortunately... They lost this one, their first game of the of this year's uh, group stage in the CAF Confederation Cup. And I have two very serious Enyimba fans here. George was here before the game with us uh, last week to preview the game. And Sam as generous as well. Vito, as usual, is here as well to give you guys a little bit of uh, insight of how this one panned out. George, welcome back to the studio. Sam, good to see you, bro. And Vito, you are welcome to the show. Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, great to talk AIMBA football as, you know, they played their first game in the CAF Confederations Cup, uh, losing two goals to nothing against Al Masri. And um, in just a short while, we'll be giving you uh, what really went down in that game and, you know, the chances of AIMBA qualifying into the next round because it's really, really important. It's not just about AIMBA you know, competing in the in the continental football in the Confederation Cup is really important that they progress to the next round because our coefficient in Nigerian football is at risk, and we need to progress to the next round to ensure that you know we are able to provide two teams for the Champions League and two teams in the Confederation Cup. If we fail to qualify out of the group stages, our chances of producing four teams on the continent is at risk, and uh, we. We'll be dissecting that alongside George and Sam with us. Yeah, Sam, good to see you. George, welcome back. And uh, let's just go right quick. Uh, George, I know last week we talked about this. You, you were hoping that anybody could come up with this one, at least with a draw. But unfortunately, they lost the game. And let me ask you, I, you know, a little bit of your, you know, what you feel about the game and especially that first goal because uh, anybody kind of started that game a little bit strong i mean they at least they were holding their own but they were caught napping in with that free kick which was an inventive one from amasri and uh, the last man there was caught uh, sleeping and he played that guy on and the rest uh, is history now or oh, how do you how do you feel about the game you know as a whole and the, the goals that are considered oh thank you very much for having me once again uh it wasn't what uh, i expected or what I hoped for. It's just unfortunate that uh, I I don't know. I don't want to say. Uh, I started having my reserves when uh, I saw that uh, Coach Yemi was not on the bench. That was where I started having my first doubt about the game. Uh, next on, we moved from not having Coach Yemi on the bench to having uh, uh, the, the shaky nature of the game. Uh, for that first goal, I would say it was shambolic. It was not what is expected of a team like Enimba. This is not what you see uh, in the team of 2002, 2, 3, 2, 4, that, that went as far as uh, the finals. It was really not uh, something... Uh, it, it showed it showed like a lackadaisical distant approach to the game, uh, defending away from home. Uh, when I saw the lineup, I tried to think out what the coach was trying to do, but at the long run, it's just something that uh, we just have to we just have to come back. We always go back to the drawing boards. Maybe our drawing board is full this time I hope, around. I hope it's not Maybe full. We'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be writing on slates this time around, <laughs> or we'll go and buy a new board in our area. There are enough <laughs> boards to be sold in our area for us to 
to to to sell uh, to to right our wrongs and 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 get a better a result together, when sir. Zamalek comes visiting. Right. Thank you. Yeah, Sam, I, I, I hope you, uh, I believe you saw the game. You've been in backstage. You've really not been happy at all <laughs> with this one. Uh, what, what went uh, opposite direction in terms of your expectation? Did you expect the to get a result from this one? And uh, what do you think happened? Oh, hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. I think you're, you're on two. Sam, are you on two? You're, you're on your phone and your laptop. George, your phone. I don't your phone. Okay, I think it's your headset. No, no, it's been disconnected. It's disconnected. You can go ahead now. Go ahead. Okay, hi. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me here. Um, Honestly, um, I didn't start the game till after like the 10th minute. You know, and first of all, I know it was a very tough ask. He's a very young team with a young manager and and had we've had all kinds of trouble this season, you know. With the league, with signing up players, with attracting the quality of talent that we want, you know, and um the club is, you know, like a shadow of its former self. So going into this game, I know that um it was a very tough ask going to Egypt, you know, to get a result. But as at one zero you know, um, I felt like, okay, we could nick something. And we actually did look decent enough until when that quadruple substitution came and everybody was all over the place, you know, and I was like, come on, come on, guys, you know. And I, I think I've learned that, you know, when I eventually start coaching, I, you can't afford to make four substitutions at once because that's too many pieces you're trying to get to get in the flow of the game. You know, a lot of the guys were still, you know, clattering into people, making fouls. People didn't know their positions and stuff and stuff. And then the second goal came. That was like the the killer. Because I feel like if we had somehow held on to that game to the closing stages, we we'll probably, you know, try to up the tempo to try to get a goal or something. You know, but as far as expectations go, honestly, um, I was it was more of a hope than honest expectation yeah. because yeah, I felt yeah. I was just the same thing. grasping at the straw really because um, maybe not this season you know I'm not very comfortable with our level of recruitment and um, I and then again the coach wasn't on the it wasn't a dugout because of the issues with his linesmen and stuff so um, yeah honestly I'm not surprised but hey it yeah, is yeah, but, but let me ask you guys quickly you know, talking about hope, expectation, and reality, I, I don't think Amasri was was that a big. Uh, that was that, that, they didn't do anything wonderful. So, do you think like anybody they get their ass together, they can not get a result against this team in Aba and probably go to Mozambique, get a draw, and come back to Aba again and probably beat Mozambique and try to get a draw from uh, Zamale to proceed? I, I don't think I don't. What I saw today, I don't think anybody. Cannot surmount this. Uh, cannot get a result against this team. I don't know what you guys think, George. Or if somebody of you can take it. For, for me, for me, for me, if I would go first, for me, the difference between Inimba today and uh, Almasri was just wanting. Almasri played to the basics of the game. That's all. Inimba couldn't stick to the basics of the game. One, two, three, four pa passes. They were at the eighteen-yard box of Inimba, but we couldn't string two. I don't think we had two complete or three complete passes in this game. I can't I can't phantom anyone. It was so difficult for Mweke, for Oferi, for uh the uh, third man on the middle there was um Ablai uh Fatai. Okay. Couldn't just string two, three passes. That's so bad for a team of Enimba's uh level. Uh, we we started hard to we had to depend on what we had at the bench. We had the likes of uh Daga had to come in and all. And Daga, if you know Daga very well, he's not really that kind of so he's not a player that strings that passes. Changes, yeah. He's more of more of a destroyer, not someone who who tries to flow the game. He's more of a destroyer, try to cut out uh, uh, uh this thing, uh danger. So that was just what the difference between us. Basics of the game. Mastery kept the ball on the ground, and that was all. Okay. 
I, I agree with you, George. And if I may add something to it, you know, you were saying what they can do in a bar, and that's a very huge difference because Neymar is not going to play them in a bar. We're going to play them in Oyo. Oyo, yeah, Oyo, yes. Yes, and that means that um, it's it even makes it worse. If he was in a bar, I mean, nowadays anybody doesn't even pack out their bar stadium, which is the it, it's crazy to think about. We can't even pack out their bar stadium. Talk more of Oyo, a place where. You know, people have more important things to yeah, engage to their time with than going to yeah. the stadium to come singing for you, you know. So it's very, very tough. And I think that, and the pain is that the club hasn't seen it as a priority to get in by the stadium that it deserves. I mean, there are a lot of troubles mm -hmm. about in but I, I don't think this is the forum to talk about it. But imagine if we have, imagine if we have a stadium in our bar that can host maybe 30,000 or 40,000 fans. We can intimidate any opponent that comes in there, you know. But now we're gonna play we're gonna play all our home games as an away or neutral ground pretty yeah. much. Mm. And it's 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 a tough ask, you know. So but hey, we can only hope. Victor, for I, I know you saw the game, Victor. What was your take? How, you know, how did you see this one? What's your you know, I know you mentioned about talked about coefficient of Nigerian Nigeria and the continental level and that's how important this game is for not just Aimba but for MPFL as a whole because we need more teams in the continental level. So how did you see this thing? Like I said, I didn't see Amas didn't look fantastic. Yeah, like George mentioned, they were very good with the basics of football. And that's how they got their result. If Aimba can get their, their ass together, they should be able to, you know, wait for them on the, on the return leg and try to get the same uh, result. I don't know what you think. Well, um, firstly, Aimba, uh, Amashri did everything better than Aimba in this game today. Amashri were much more clinical and go against Aimba. Although the goals they scored, the two goals they scored were very sloppy, but you have to give kudos to the, the goalkeeper. Who so I think is the, is the second, Ani, uh, I've forgotten his other name, but he's the second choice goalkeeper for Aimba. And he pulled up a Ozemina, very wonderful Ozemina, Ozemina, Ani. Yeah, Ozemina. And uh, I think four saves. You know, there was a time he made at least four in the second half. You know, it could have been more. It could have been 3-0. It could have been 4-0. So kudos to the goalkeeper. And uh, those goals they considered were actually very sloppy. You know, the defenders were making silly errors, especially in the first half and some part of the second half. Silly errors. You know, the first goal came in from a free kick, you know, at the edge of the 18-yard box by the far left-hand side. And it was a very dangerous foul. I think they picked up at least uh, four yellow cards for for Aimba. So I think Zamalek did, um, or rather, I'm I'm did everything better than Aimba in today's game. And it's something for them to worry about because in the last, you know, since the preliminaries till now, Aimba is yet to score any goal in the CAF Confederation score. And it's something to worry about. And uh, hopefully they get the acts right. And, there, there, was, there was one thing again I also observed, which is also a problem for Nigerian football and maybe Africa as a, as a whole. Sam, you mentioned something there, and George said it to stringing of passes. I think the, at the base of that is people holding their positions. Sometimes you see our players, everybody is going towards the ball. I, and I must say, and you know, I also coach coach grassroots here in America sometimes. And I noticed that when we go against the Spanish teams, they're not better than us individually, but they have discipline of positioning. People they understand their roles on the pitch. And when when you understand your role and you stay your position, it's easier for your teammate to find you because it's not, it doesn't have to look too much to find his next teammate. You know, so I don't know. I think that's one of the problems that Edinburgh had today. I don't know, you guys have been watching most of their games all season. Is it something that they, they have to work on or is it just a one-off today? Maybe maybe location of, you know, overtook the players. If I, if, I could, if I could answer to that um, or if I could um, lend the thoughts to that, I was impressed by how the players tried to pass out at the back. You know, they were very calm with their passing. They could, you know, despite the press, they could always find the extra man, you know. And that, for me, was like, you know, the raw materials for, you know, decent coaching. At least, you know, the coach is doing something, you know. But then again, taking it to the next level, being able to pass out from the back is great. Now we've mastered it. Let's get to the next level of finding, from you know. The middle, yes. yes, you know, get the free man. How do you progress from here? To the attack of, or sorry, to the 
to the final uh-huh. thought, you know, like they say, yeah. So I think that um, the raw materials are there, but we just need to um, um, move to that, you know, next step, you know, that extra level, you know, shift gears. And personally, right right from when I started writing the blog, that Ayimba fan, I've always um, sticky sides with the coaches, right? Just like we have today with Yema. I like Coach Yema, and I think he's one of the most intelligent coaches in the country, you know. But I do feel that um, he needs to be allowed to grow with this team. And he, as himself, also has to find a way to solve this goal-scoring problem. For instance, the past couple of weeks in the league, scoring goals is an issue because Clemson Jephthah has been with the national team. So sometimes, you know, the left with Ifani Himele and it's um it's he's not the I mean this guy came from Ijebu United. He's not the most potent striker out there. And pathetically enough, I mean you have Godwin Obaje who Coach Emma told me he was trying to get him to come play for Inimba and say, Hey guy, we're on the continent, come play for us. But the guy snubbed him and went to Rangers. Same thing with Ahmed Musa. You know, he tried to get him to hey come play with us, we're playing in the continent. He snubbed him and went to Canopilas, you know. So that tells you that, you know, back in the day when anybody had that kind of pool to be able to get any player they want, you know, they would just drop the money and pay the player. But it, those days are gone. And that's the reason why the, t- today's administration needs to wake up because this this is not the anybody that we know. Yeah, the, George, you heard what he said there, which is true. I noticed that, and that's what I meant when I talk about holding position. I, I discovered that when anybody gets to the middle, the middle part of the field, they kind of, you know, it, it's chaotic. There is really no system to as to how they want to progress the ball from, and that's why it's difficult to to get the goal. There was one particular incident. I was watching the guy that was playing from the left side of the wing, and he just. You know, wandered away from his position and was just chasing the ball around. I'm like, no, bro, there's, there has to be a system to press and a system to build and attack a team. There, there is something I he made mention of that I feel would not work. It's a Nigerian thing. Uh, I was present in the entire um, five games during the Super uh, Six. Two, uh, that should be uh, last year mm-hmm. when Enyimba uh, won the league. Uh, that was 2023. 20, yes, I was I was present in the entire six games. We had a clear pattern of play. Then it was Finidi George that was the coach. Now I felt would build on that on that uh, uh, play that style of play. Even though we had a, even then we had we still had Obioma uh, in that team. Uh, Obioma was a little bit uh, in and out injured. Then uh, Mboma came in. So I felt, okay, Mboma coming in would build on that this thing. We are going continental. We have to, we need to keep him. At the end of the day, it's not working. Now, this is where I have an issue with what he said. He said, leave Yema with the team. Would you leave Yema with the team and would the team stay with Yema? That is another thing. You can leave Yema with the team, but the team will not stay with Yema. Because as soon as it gets uh, to the end of this season, I can bet you half of the team will go to that team. Four, six, seven players are leaving. Two will be going to Tanzania. One is going to Uganda. Somebody is signing for Benin Republic, and another person is going to where I don't know. That is just where the issue is. Yeah, yeah. We we, we discussed that at the beginning of this of this of this season, and uh, like uh, Sam mentioned, we'll have I think I will guys have you guys back, and we'll look at him by in depth. And I don't know some of these things. And as it goes to NPFL, other NPFL teams, too, it's a big, like Sammy mentioned, it's a problem in Nigerian for a professional football league. Players don't stay beyond one season. And teams cannot guarantee players signing contracts for more than one season. I think uh, Sporting Lagos and Remo Stars are trying to work on that. They're beginning to give players longer contracts. And that's, they are keeping players. And it's not just, it doesn't just start and end with paying these players good salaries. It's also how you manage the entire process, the structure. You know, what, what are they looking at? Can they say, okay, this is the player I want to belong? You know, these are the things that have to come in for players to sign. It's not only about money, because any amount, somebody says something, if you go in business and compete with price, somebody will always advise you. 
So you either you, if you are paying more, other person can always pay more. If you if you want to charge less, other person can always sure. charge lesser. So there has to be other things that people will have to see and identify with that will make them want to stay with you. So at this, I think that is the next level for not just Enyimba, but for all the teams and the administrators in Nigerian Professional League to find a way to keep this. Like I can mention, for a player to be living in Nigeria and go to play in the Republic, that's 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 uh, uh, and you're still at the at the peak of your powers. That was is, is unheard of. You know, if somebody is retired and wants to retire, wants to go and help them in better to build their, build their reputation, that's understandable. Well, as a player that's 26, 27, 28 years going living in Nigeria National and Professional League uh, to go to a uh, Benin Republic, uh, that's unheard of. And I think well, it's something that has to be looked on. Guys, uh, thank you very much for stopping by. It's a short one. Uh, Sam, we're going to get your details and put in the description. The uh, the Dalfan Enyimba, you know, for people who are uh, viewers out there who like Eyimba, who are fan, Eyimba fans, uh, Sam does what he does for Eyimba fans out there. We'll, give, we'll, we'll put the the details in the description uh, section so that you guys can also see what he's doing and join the fold. Like I said, the reason why I have you guys here and we are doing this is part of the reasons why people are uh, EPL and all these fans are out there because people are talking about them. And uh, we have fans all around the globe who also view or watch Transit TV and who have been asking about Nigerian football. We told them that this season, we're going to go big on Nigerian league and Nigerian teams. So that's why we are here. Anytime, anytime you guys have time, please don't fail to join us. And as we try to get the word out there, I, I think once our administrators begin to see and know that these things are being talked about all around the globe, they will also help themselves and uh, give us better things to watch. Thank you guys for stopping by. Victor, thank you right. for your time. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Ciao. All right. Thank you.